Welcome back. Now here's a question. Can viral advertising be bad for you? Well, if you operate in that old medium, television, it seems that the answer would be yes. With TV advertising revenues down by as much as 15% in some markets, the people who make their money from commercials have been having to think outside the idiot box to chase consumers who've moved onto the web. Viral ads thrive in a low-budget, anarchic world that tends to rely on consumers distributing the ads through email. Now virals are moving on, tapping into social communities like MySpace and Facebook, and as Salah Kadar reports, they're finding new ways to get their products talked about, often without us even knowing about it. Since the arrival of YouTube and social networking, the whole world's gone viral. Oh! The inmates have literally taken over the asylum, and they're televising themselves. We travelled to London's creative hub to meet some of the leaders in the field of viral marketing. The clever people hired to slip Ooh, under that. the radar and infiltrate the internet with viral ads. That's our job basically. We, we, we start with the audience, we, we figure out how we're going to entertain them and then we you know, I mean, it's quid pro quo. I think the audience don't mind as long as they're being entertained. They realise that the brand's got to get something out of it, and if the brand doesn't put their money into it, then the film will never get made. Some of these virals don't even look like ads. This speech is my recital. I think it's very vital. To rock around. That's right. On top. It's tricky. It's tricky. It's tricky. Here we go. It's tricky to rock around, to rock around. That's right. On time is tricky. It's tricky. It's tricky. We play, we play a game. And, and if challenged, we would always say, yep, yep, that was an ad. So the, the, the flicky you know. phone instance is, is interesting because we didn't put a web, uh, a, a URL or a blog space or a MySpace page for the guy who's, who, you know, sort of in it. We didn't say this is a real person, I was just mucking around and this is a cool thing. We put an email address at the end. That's the only thing, only thing that kind of links it back to, to, to anybody or anything. And if you wrote in an email to this email address, we'd write back to you and say, yeah, we're, we're, we made that film for, for Samsung, we're marketeers. Mm -hmm. We'd be absolutely, totally honest and transparent. I think that's really important. And we only do that, um, partly because we think it's the right thing to do morally, but we also know if we don't, the audience has the power to come back at us. Not only have creative viral agencies shot up, startups like Contraband have carved out a niche in viral distribution or seeding. They pride themselves on knowing what's out there and how to get it noticed. They've got a lot more sophisticated, uh, there's a lot more brands getting involved in it, the likes of Xbox um, and Sony PlayStation, and now the companies like Unilever and Procter & Gamble are starting to get into this space. The brands that are very active in this space are, are very successful in, online, and they continue to be successful online. Um, but there is a hesitancy, as I said, from brands to actually get too involved in viral because they see it, they still see it as the wild, wild west. Well, viral has changed a lot in the last five or six years. So we, we started about six years ago. In those days, it was little attachments that people would add on to their emails, little films or stills or little bits of text. And they'd send them around to, to, to a group of group of friends. Um, pure viral in, in, in lots of ways, like an exponential growth, only sent by email, shared amongst people. Now with kind of web 2.0 and, and with, with sort of channels starting to, to appear and get hardwired into the web, um, viral has much more become a kind of a, a group recommendation. Putting something on your MySpace page, like Ed said, is actually much more akin to hanging a, um, hanging a picture on the wall of your living room. It's, you don't know who's going to see it. It's a much more kind of public expression of yourself. And we've, what we've found that the impact of that is that we've kind of stopped making the equivalent of kind of slightly smutty jokes, um, which viral ads used to be. You know, it was much more kind of edgy and much more about heads exploding and silly things happening. And we've started making stuff which looks a bit more like a kind of Athena poster you might hang on your wall. To buy a Christmas gift for someone which helps those living in poverty, visit OxfamUnwrapped.com.
people expect to see barrels everywhere. I think that's that's the the, the, the benchmark of success for barrels is that it does make it onto YouTube and it's uploaded 20 times uh, by different people and it has you know a decent amount of views, which is sort of in excess of, of sort of two or three hundred thousand views. Um, the real benchmark for us on viral is when it hits over 1.5 million views. That's when we know that a viral has gone viral. One of the most popular videos to go viral recently was this low budget travelogue called Where the Hell is Matt? This guy, just for the hell of it, travelled around the world and made a little film of him doing a little sort of jig in all lots of iconic places. And some brand, I forget, whoops, it was like a chewing Stride gum brand. chewing gum. Stride or Smart or something Stride. chewing gum. Um, again, said, tell you what, do that again, but we'll just shoot it a bit better and we'll take you to more cooler places and we'll take a professional camera crew, so all the shots are really lovely. But basically, he's just doing the same thing to the same song. But again, it really Things. works. You, you know, I think genuinely kind of feel warm towards the brand for having a, you know, because part of it is just you think, wow, lucky bugger. You know, someone came to him and just gave him a check to fly around the world and go to all these cool places. Good on you, mate. We, we recently released a, a thing for Levi's. Can we talk about this? Yep. One of the favourite thing we've done recently for me is, is um, something for Levi's, mm -hmm. where we, we, we sort of faked a publicity stunt, which was an enormous puppet which was operated by helicopters wearing these jeans, landing in Reykjavik at four o'clock in the morning on a sort of, on sort of summer's, <laughs> summer's morning, so it was lovely sort of soft light. And pretending it happened by filming the evidence of it, all these people walking around with their mobile phones going, wow, look, there's an enormous puppet being operated by helicopters and then we dotted the evidence of those that event on around on YouTube and if you typed in the right kind of kind of connecting search string you would get all these films and we did a, a dozen 14 films something and some flicker pictures etc um, and then you could follow them all around and see all the comments and then you realize what the story was what what went on or did it go on or didn't it go on and the kind of the comments and the chat around it and the buzz around it was really the campaign so people itself. were discussing you know could you really fly those helicopters that low over Reykjavik or, you know, would it be legal? And other people saying, no, of course not, my brother flies an Apache helicopter, there's absolutely no way. And other people were saying, well, anyway, they'd get destabilised by the payload, that puppet, if it's made of wood, must weigh at least this much. I mean, just, it kind of, you know, just, it just gets people chatting and, 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 and kind of engaging with it. And largely what we do actually is see what's going on, see what is a kind of trend and a kind of appropriate it and make it a bit better and spend some more money on it. I mean, that's more or less what we've done for the last couple of years, but I think in a very sensitive and creative course, way. Yes. Salah Qadar reporting. And here's how our Global Village voices see that story. I have mixed feelings about viral content. On one hand, I really enjoy seeing how people creatively capture others' attention. For instance, if someone had a list about 10 ways the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and Butter are alike, that'd be interesting, and I think many people would pass that along to others. But does that viral nature of that list, or the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles or Butter, make those things worthwhile or remarkable? Not necessarily, and I think we can see that, as most viral content has a very short shelf life in the public's consciousness. And that just further proves that hype does not make something remarkable or worthwhile. Finally, ever tried to catch a mosquito using chopsticks? Next time you can't find a newspaper, this is a media show after all. You could consider this tricky but elegant solution. Our internet video of the week is a clever ad for a health campaign. It's about malaria. We'll see you next time at The Listening Post.